Kira 3.5 dropped and we're going to take a look at one of the exciting new features. Hey, welcome to the first layer. This is 3 Minute Thursday, our very first one on our upgraded set. Hope you like it. My name's Richard Cleveland. I'm your host here on the first layer, and I've got a great team behind me, and some of them are here in the studio today driving me crazy. But you know what we're talking about today? A great new product that just dropped yesterday. Well, actually an update to a great new, a great product, not a new product, but a great product. Cura 3.5 dropped yesterday, and it dropped hard with a bunch of new features and a couple of enhancements. And we're gonna show you one of those enhancements today regarding infill. And we're going to put three minutes on the clock, so let's go ahead and do that, and we'll jump right into it. All right, so we're over here at the computer. We've got our very large XYZ cube loaded into Cura. We're, uh, for all intent and purposes, going to use the Ender 3 profile today. Uh, what I want to show you here is, let's have a quick peek at, before we get into the actual gradual infill, uh, I want to tell you what gradual infill is. And gradual infill reduces the amount of infill used by decreasing the infill percentage in the lower layers. Um, every gradual infill step divides the infill percentage by a factor of two. The result is a dense infill near the top layers, which is essential, and uh, a reduced print time. So it's also going to save you on material. So here we've got our cube loaded in. And we've got an infill percentage of 20, which is pretty standard. So if we go ahead and just kind of have a look here, we can see what the infill looks like. It's pretty dense at 20% inside this cube. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to gradual infill. So we're just going to take our mouse here and go down and find gradual infill. There it is, gradual infill steps right here. Uh, you can put your pointer on it. Gradual infill steps will give you a little dialog box uh, just showing you exactly uh, what it does. So for the sake of this uh, demo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the gradual infill steps to two. And I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to start to re-slice the model. And as we slice down, you're going to notice something here. Here's our top layers. See how dense that is? So we're at that full 20% up here. But as we go down, because we divided it by a factor of two, we now have 10% infill at the bottom, which is saving us on plastic. And as we get to the top and we get to where it needs the most infill, like look at that Z there. The Z on the top of this model, you can see it's already started to build in some of that infill. And as we make our way to the top, we can start to see as it gets to uh, the supporting layers, it just fills them right in. So you can see right here how it's all filling in. Now we can change this. We can lower our percentage of infill. Um, we can go 10%, divide it by two. That way our bottom layers are only at 5%. Um, and that kind of makes it actually really cool. It's going to give you the best chance of your top layers not having any holes in them. And that seems to be what a lot of people seem to suffer from. Gradual infill helps you to eliminate that. And later on in this series, uh, we're gonna be talking about 3.5 for a little while. I'm gonna take you through some of the updates over the next few shows as well. And you guys can see here how beneficial this is gonna to be to your models. So there you have a gradual infill steps. You can change them from two to whatever number you want, and it will divide it by that number. So let's uh, head back over to the big screen. I think we got this done in three minutes or less. I hope we did. You know, sometimes we don't, sometimes we do. This is our first three minute Thursday. Thanks for coming along on the ride. Hope you learned something about gradual infill steps today, how it works, how it can benefit you in your 3D printing adventures. Now, a few people I want to thank, my amazing staff, you know, Brian Baker, Frank Awesome, and as always, the lovely Jess Corniching, who is behind the controls today. So we want to thank all of our Patreons as well. 
Uh, you, without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do this. Look, we've changed things. It looks so much nicer today. Um, no more black background. We got some nice pop of colors back there. If you want to become a Patreon and get involved in supporting the show, you can go to patreon.com slash the first layer and sign up for one of our levels there. We are making headway into uh, doing more on Patreon, so stick with us. You won't be disappointed. Uh, if you're not into a monthly commitment, you can always just go ahead and buy any one of our staff members a coffee by going to buymeacoffee.com slash the first layer. We all drink it around here. As a matter of fact, I've got some right here, and I'm just going to have a little bit. Mm. Oh, it, oh, it's so good. Tim Hortons. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah, we're wrapping up the show. Let's thank our benefactor who gives us the space to do the show in each and every week, and that is, of course, Spool 3D. Spool 3D, print it right, print it with Spool 3D. They've got everything that you need from printers to filaments to all the parts and accessories that you can need for your next upgrade or custom build. So check them out today at spool3d.ca. If you're in Canada, you can get free shipping on orders over $140. So make sure you check that out as well. So check them out today at spool3d.ca. Print it right. Print it with Spool 3D. Now that's it for 3 Minute Thursday. I hope you guys liked it. And I'm going to bounce out of here because we got a lot of other stuff to get to today. Now... Remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print. We'll see you next time.